the Hudson Library and Historical Society's Adult Program Series. Presents award-winning reporter and interviewer, Kabir Bhatia. Presenting a grilled cheese demo and tasting event. With author and grilled cheese expert, Shane Kearns. Author of Melt, 100 Amazing Adventures in Grilled Cheese. And his grilled cheese blog, grilledshane.com. Recorded at Hudson Library's Flood Meeting Room on August 19, 2015. American blue cream cottage gouda Edam provolone Romano Swiss. You have your entire cheddar family. Can you run the uh, hams oh, back one more yeah. time? Just I just oh, want to. Oh, oh, yeah. All right. Hello. Welcome. How many of you have been to a cooking class here before? Okay. And how many of you have been to a program here before? Okay. So most of you are familiar with our programs. We will have cooking classes ongoing because they're very popular and people really love them. Um, this is also part of Kabir Bhatia's uh, award-winning reporter's ongoing series, monthly interview series. So Kabir put this together. Um, he, he found this wonderful chef over here um, and organized the program for us. And so what we're going to do is have a little cooking demo and then Kabir's going to interview Shane. So that's kind of the format. At the end of the program, I'm going to hand out evaluations. That's for the library. It helps us know what, what works, what doesn't. Um, so we would appreciate it if you filled those out, but just so you know what's coming. Um, I'm pleased to introduce um, Solon native, Sanford Shane, who's by Shane Kearns. Um, he's channeled his love of grilled cheese into his own website at grilledshane.com. Um, so go there. I was like putting together the program and making these flyers and I'm like drooling because he has <laughs> gorgeous pictures of grilled cheese and like I told all my co-workers and then they're like we have to get grilled cheese. So um, so his, his um, blog is devoted to unique vegetarian grilled cheese sandwiches and recipes created with a twist. In 2012, he published a grilled cheese cookbook, Melt, 100 Amazing Adventures in Grilled Cheese, filled with 100 original grilled cheese recipes, half savory, half sweet. Those are available for sale, $15 over there. And I cannot find these books on Amazon, so now's your chance. <laughs> um, presently, Kearns has plans to open up a Cleveland cheese shop called Locavore Clee, featuring local Ohio cheese and other Ohio-produced products. So I hope you enjoyed today's program. There will be plenty of tasting. So. I'm just going to jump in real quick. Welcome to Hudson, Thank Shane. You very much. Thank, Thank you for you. coming. Um, we're just going to spend about 20 minutes here talking about your career. No, I'm kidding. We're gonna, <laughs> everyone's like, Dah! he's going to do the cooking. I'm going to watch and enjoy. And we will have Q&A at the end. Uh, but I'm sure if you've got questions about the process, he'd be happy to, uh, to answer them. So have at it. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for having me. I greatly appreciate it. We're going to do two different grilled cheeses tonight. One is a little bit on the uh, savory side, and one's more dessert. The first one's going to be a popcorn grilled cheese that's open-faced, and then the second one is going to be a chocolate uh, mascarpone with strawberry and a drizzle of chocolate and a little more desserty for everybody. So um, the best way to start any grilled cheese is to melt your butter. Um, some people say uh, melt the butter in the pan or brush the butter on the bread uh, just so you get a nice brown uh, texture and color on your bread and that you don't have any missed spots or anything that doesn't look so good. It's easier to melt the butter in like a little pan like this in the microwave for, I don't know, 15 seconds, and then use a brush to brush it out. And that way you make sure you hit every spot on the, on the bread and, um, and it looks good and it gets nice and crunchy for you and doesn't burn or you don't have any missed spots or anything like that. For the first one is the popcorn one. We're doing an Italian bread. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just butter it on there. Just like 
Don't be stingy with the butter, but you don't need to overdo it. Now I have my uh, pan, saute pan, just on a low heat to start, and then we can, you don't want to overdo it. Pop, ooh, this one actually, it's open face, so you only need one slice of bread. Um, it's a real simple sandwich, just something a little bit different. We're gonna go ahead and take, for this sandwich, we have provolone cheese. Again, sliced or shredded. I always go with shredded, it melts easier, melts more evenly. Again, you don't have, this way with it shredded, you don't have to worry about it melting and then um, the bread burning underneath you. With the sliced, that can happen. So you just put a little bit, again. It's really not that complicated. Just put a nice even layer of cheese on your bread. Shredded provolone, this one just a nice mild cheese. Nothing too fancy, obviously, if you want to do a little different cheese or something like that, you're more than welcome to. So you got that. Then I have just, I had plain popcorn that I drizzled with some of this nacho cheddar, like seasoning salt, shook it up, and you're all set. So you put that, then on top of that, there you go. Again, put as much or as little popcorn as you want on it. Kind of push it in so that way when the cheese melts, the popcorn's gonna melt right in, just gonna slide right into the cheese. Turn the heat up just a little bit. Let's get a little popcorn piece. And just to make sure you didn't miss any, you can sprinkle a little more of the popcorn seasoning on top. There you go. Just throw the little last bits of cheese on top. And then with this one in the book, it calls for either crushed red pepper to make it a little bit hotter, a little more savory, or you could do caramel sauce drizzled on top as well. Since I had a, was going to do a dessert one tonight, I went with the crushed red peppers. So you're able to, and then again, just sprinkle on to taste. Real simple one. There you go. That's that. And then you can take your spatula, just kind of push the popcorn in there. Give it another minute to melt. And that one really is as simple as that. I mean, if you wanted to put a lid on it, you're more than you could put another slice that might be a little too much carbs. Um, but you could definitely do it something a little bit different with the popcorn, a little bit of the cheese, two different flavors. I mean, it's really as simple as that to make a nice, delicious grilled cheese. So let's take that out. We'll give that another minute just to melt, turned it up a little bit. The other one we're going to do, it's going to be a little more complicated. A little more. And then we're going to have samples of the popcorn one coming around right now. So there's your popcorn one. Like I said, you could do caramel sauce. You could even do chocolate on top of this. I mean, it's all with, with the sandwiches. We'll turn that down. Um, all my recipes, I say, are just kind of guides to how to make a good sandwich. If you want to do a different cheese, use a different cheese. If you want to use different kind of uh, bread or anything. This was just a plain Italian. You're more than willing to do, welcome to do that. If you have stuff in your freezer, I mean in your pantry or whatever, you can do that as well. Take this, and even melt a little pizza right on top. That's the popcorn one, nice and simple, but very tasty. Move that out of the way. And then with the chocolate one, we're gonna start with a fresh, Fresh challah bread, could do brioche or anything like that. This is just a nice challah bread. Again, butter. Whereas the other one you kind of wanted to melt the cheese, this one you don't necessarily 
knead it, you just kind of want to get a nice golden brown color on the bread. So you got that. So we're going to go ahead. I created a, um, this one has mar mascarpone cheese, which is more of a dessert cheese, a more spreadable cheese. Doesn't really melt necessarily, but I went ahead and mixed um, some fresh pure chocolate in here. Went with a 54% chocolate and just mixed it together till it gets a nice like chocolate brown color. You know, just go ahead and spread it without destroying your bread. Turn that down just a little bit. Go ahead and spread that on again. As much or as little chocolate you want to add to the cheese, you can, or as much as little, however rich you want to make it. So you get a nice layer of the chocolate right on the bread. This is kind of like a s'more graham cracker inspired sandwich. You can take just some plain graham crackers. Place them right on top. Nice and easy. Go ahead and put one more there. Oh, that's good. Okay. And then you have your fresh sliced strawberries. Go right on top. Real simple, nice, fresh sliced strawberries. And then if there wasn't enough chocolate in your cheese, <coughs> go ahead. This is just melted chocolate, no cheese in this one. You just kind of drizzle it on your sandwich. Like that. <coughs> yeah, go ahead. I uh, made, uh, made them earlier, right before we got here, right before we started, yeah. Yeah. And then, that's really, then you go ahead, give that another minute just to brown, put the top on, cut it in half, and then you go <coughs> set. Give it another second. This one, like I said, mascarpone's not going to really melt. You're just kind of getting a nice golden brown color on the bread, kind of heating everything up, giving the chocolate a chance to interact with everything. Oops. And then, if you really want to make it, extra fancy. Go ahead, if you have any leftover chocolate, I just got a little bit left. Just kind of drizzle it. Tie in there. Right on. And just like that, you have two sandwiches made less than a matter of minutes. Does anybody have any questions about the specific sandwiches here? If you were going to make a whole tray for a laser, you use like a big griddle? Yeah, you, you could definitely use a griddle. Um, to be honest, last night, time to save time, we kind of did just the butter of the bread and kind of cooked the bread to a light golden brown. And then we assembled the, the cheese, I mean, the actual sandwiches today. So you could definitely do it on a griddle. Um, just kind of get the, get it. What's that? Would like pans in the oven work? Pans, it would be. I think with the griddle, you're going to get that heat contact directly. That's going to give you that nice golden brown. Otherwise, if you do it in the oven, it's kind of just going to crisp the whole bread and not necessarily give you the golden brown. Today, we kind of, we browned them last night and then we put them in the oven to, re, to heat them up, which would be something you could do like the night before and then in the morning or in the afternoon, you could definitely uh, kind of cheat that way if you don't. Doing a lot of grilled cheese on a, like a saute pan like this 
but obviously takes some time, so you can, you can kind of fudge it a little bit, and, and it still comes out just as good, just as well. Any other questions or comments? Good work. Thank you. Thanks. Everyone's eating, so they're all, uh, all every, everyone's happy. Uh, we're going to maybe head out front of this a little okay, bit perfect. so they can see us, and we'll, we'll chat a little. Let me. Yeah. We got a lot of sam lots of extra samples, so eat up. We'll have Don't more. Say that. <laughs> 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 to you. So, uh, first of all, tell us how did you get interested in this? You touched on it a little bit, but everyone, you know, a lot of folks figure, oh, I can make grilled cheese, but you've made it your life's work. I have. Uh, oddly enough, somehow I stumbled on it. Um, my grandmother, and then my mom, who's passing out the samples, always made me great grilled cheese sandwiches it, as I was younger and then as I grew up. So it was kind of a comfort food that way. And then as I continued to go, I'm like, I always had a passion to open a restaurant. I'm like, like 20, 21, I'm like, oh, I'm going to open a restaurant tomorrow. Obviously that didn't happen and wasn't going to happen overnight. So I'm like, I'm going to start a blog. I'm going to use the grilled cheese kind of as my, my canvas to create, use my creativity both in like making the sandwiches and then taking the photographs um, and kind of do a sandwich a week and stuff like that. So that's kind of my progression. I mean, when your grandmother makes the sandwich and then your mom makes the sandwich, it kind of holds a special place. In your heart, so. And we had questions about uh, oven pans versus griddles, stove. Uh, what about the, the age old healthfulness of uh, spray, you know, Pam yeah. versus butter? Tell us your thoughts uh, on that. I mean, you, you're not with, with that. I do like a, 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 I do a Land O'Lakes sweet butter that my mom used and that my grandmother used. And, it, and just the butter will get you that nice um, golden brown. With the spray, I think it's going to be the same problem that you have when you melt it on the pan. It's going to be patchy. You're not going to get that nice golden brown color. Um, I've heard people, and I'm still meaning to try this, use mayo instead of butter. But I've never, I have yet to try it. And they say, like, they do it instead of butter, and that's all they do. Um, but I haven't tried it yet. But so I stick with the melting the butter. The pan, I mean, the pan is there, I think, not, to not stick to the pan, not to give you necessarily that golden brown color that the butter will give you. Right, and have you not gotten to the mayo, just you haven't gotten around to it or you actively don't want to do it? Um, a little bit of both, probably. I mean, it's, it's intriguing. I've heard people do it and they, they swear by it, um, but I just haven't dove in just yet. But mayo always used to freak me out. Now I kind of use it and it's a little better now, um, but now it's right. just haven't gotten there yet. Well, what's your, what's your ethnic background? Because grilled cheese doesn't really have an ethnicity behind it. What's yours? Um, I'm Jewish um, and my mom and we came from Eastern Europe. My mom, grandmother came from small town America and stuff like that. So I mean I, I don't know why. I think I was a pretty picky eater as a kid. Obviously now I'm not as much but I think as a picky eater you go to the grilled cheese because that's what I'll eat. So that led me to this so I can't complain about that. It, it's an everybody food. It is an everybody food. I mean um, there's so much you can do with it that you can make it your own, like if you like something, you can use that. If you like something else, you can use that. Um, if you just have something in your pantry, you can use whatever you have in your pantry, melt it with some cheese and, and you're, you're fine. Um, go from there. there. There's one I read about, um, and I don't have the whole recipe because there's so much to it, but I remember avocado was a key piece. There were some things that I thought, oh, this is a very exotic, interesting sandwich, but then you added in, I got to the list, and the next I saw waffles. Oh yeah. So how did you, was that another one of those uh, whatever's in the pantry? Yeah, that yeah. When I don't tell when us that, what it is. Uh, I forget the name I of it. Can't remember. Oh, avocado. I think there might be an egg in there. Yes, there was an egg and some waffle. I think waffle. when you're trying to just be creative, you don't necessarily obviously need to use bread even when you're making a grilled cheese. I mean, some purists may disagree, but um, you can definitely use waffles. I think it was an egg, like maybe a, a fried egg of some sort, avocado, horseradish cheese, and a waffle. I think that's the one. It's a really good one. Um, I love breakfast food, so I had to mix it in there somehow. Um, but yeah, there's ones, when you're doing 100, the bread kind of gets old after a while, Italian bread. There's only so many breads, even if there are really good breads. Um, so I mean, you can, like there's a portobello one that I do. I mean, so you don't even that just the cap and melt stuff inside. So I mean, if you, even if you're on a diet or whatever, certain like gluten-free or stuff like my nephew's gluten-free, so I know all about that. You can make a grilled cheese that's gluten-free and still enjoy it even without all the 
good stuff. I mean, like, the chocolate one probably is not going to be good for your diet or whatever, but it's delicious, so. The, now, gluten-free, is that really a thing? Because she says she's gluten-free. I think she's just making it up to be healthy. Is that really a thing? <laughs> there, are, no, okay. th there are some people who it is, they make it up, and there are some who it is. I, I'm joking here. Yeah. But, um, so you mentioned ingredients, the various ingredients, portobello, waffles, uh, avocado. What's something that you have tried to get into a sandwich and just you've never gotten a satisfactory result? Oh. A, a specific or, or a few ingredients? Yeah, there's, there's potato chips I kind of... That's never worked? It hadn't worked for me. I think I was going too exotic with the sandwich because I've heard from other people use potato chips. I think I tried to be too exotic with like a sauce in it or something and it just didn't work. Um, really, overall, everything I've thrown in it has kind of worked. I mean, I've done pasta in there, which is kind of crazy because that's carb overload, um, but it tastes good. Cooked pasta or raw pasta? Cooked pasta. Yeah. Okay, all right, I was gonna say. Yeah, no, that would give you an unneeded, unwanted crunch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's always something I mean, everything that I've tried it has kind of worked, actually. Yeah. What about for, for spice, for heat? What are some things that you like to put in there? Uh, how, uh, peppers, any kind of peppers. I always kind of tend towards peppers for some reason. Or, or just a spicy, you could obviously go with a spicy cheese, like a horseradish cheese. Horseradish is good as well. Um, but for some reason, I always go with peppers. Is there a spread of any? There's, the, there's this red sandwich spread that I've started seeing at Acme. There's Jardinera. Is there any spreads like that that have gone really well? Um, Those are some things that I personally put on grilled cheese. But. Yeah, the, the mayo spreads is kind of a lot of stuff because, I mean, you can add anything to mayo and kind of make it your own. So, I mean, if you put some hot sauce in a mayo and stuff like that, um, it's kind of just a clean palate, just gives you the nice smooth texture. You can add anything. Now, I have to ask, the title of the book, of course, is, is Melt. Correct. And there, I, I think there happens to be a restaurant. Correct. Also named Melt? Correct. And they have grilled cheese? Correct. Oh, my God. I didn't know it's, that. It is. How did that happen? It, it's un, un, I'm unaffiliated with the restaurant. Um, but yeah, uh, the publisher came up with a title. They're from out of town. When I told them they had a restaurant, they're like, oh, well, this is the title we want. Yeah. It's only in, I mean, it's a little pocket. So, I mean, sure. they kind of uh, chose the title. And it, but, but, and no, I wasn't trying to put you on the no, spot. No, no, that's but, fine. but uh, it's sort of uh, that, your book and the restaurant sort of gained prominence, prominence at the same time. Correct, correct. Why? Yeah. Why do and, you think? Um, I think people are going back to comfort food and all and that and I mean like I said you can do so much with it and still call it a grilled cheese um, so I think it's the comfort food people are going back to simpler simpler foods and stuff like that so. and the book's been out for three years four three, years yeah, I think three years 20, 2011 2012 um, I think maybe I forget the publisher I did the blog the publisher emailed me I got an email as I'm driving to work and it says grilled cheese cookbook in the subject and I'm like oh they probably want me to sell a book or they want me to do something with someone else's book. And then I read the email and it's like, do you want to do a book? And I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> so I mean, it really was as simple as that. And then that was in December. And then the following, they were talking about it coming out in October, November. So I'm like, ah, I got plenty of time. Mm -hmm. But the manuscript was due like, like March, mid-March maybe. So by the time it boiled down, I had like two weeks to make a hundred mm -hmm. sandwiches. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, I can use most of them from the blog. And they're like, well, if anybody comes, if anybody buys the book from your blog and they're mostly recipes from the blog, they're going to be disappointed. And then if people buy the book, see how the recipes get excited, go to your blog and then see they're the same, they're not going to come back. So I only ended up doing about 10 from the blog. So 90 were created over a month or two span. Right. And since then, how many more? Um, I've kind of, I took like six months off after the book because um, there, that was a lot of grilled cheese. I was making about six to 12 a day wow. um, from morning to night, photographing them, creating them, doing the dishes. Mom helped. Yes. <laughs> Mom, Mom helped do the dishes. Dad taste tested. Dog ate the scraps. Um, neighbors ate ones when we couldn't eat so many. Um, but yeah, after that, I kind of, I mean, I did my thing and then I kind of, from there, I kind of moved into just trying different cheeses and stuff like that, experimenting with different cheeses, just melting them with maybe sliced tomato or something like that, and just seeing the cheese aspect of it more so than all the ingredients within it. And, and your go-to is sharp cheddar, yeah. which is extra sharp, New York sharp, which one? White sharp? Extra sharp. Extra sharp? Yeah, I like the bite to it. And I know there's like, there's like so many cheeses, even at Whole Foods or whatever, you can get these fancy cheeses and everything. But for some reason, a nice sharp cheddar is what I always go back to. From, from around here? Because uh, I know you're into local cheeses. Yeah. That's what I'm going to ask about next. Uh, I don't know if anybody, I haven't found 
cheddar necessarily from around here. That's good. Um, not sure anybody's making it. I, they might be. I, yeah, I'm not sure anybody's making it at the moment, but um, there's Beecher's. They're out of Seattle slash New York. They make something like a cheddar that's really good. Um, but yeah, cheddar for some reason, it's simple and it's just really good. We have someone here from Seattle, so we have to ask, <laughs> what were the Seahawks thinking at the end of the Super Bowl? What was that? <laughs> and how is Beecher's? Can you vouch for its excellence? Yeah. And it's only, they have like an outpost in New York City, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But you can get it. You can get it, yeah, you can get it. Um, Miles Market had it for a little while. I'm not sure where else I know them now. They had it for a short time. Um, but I ended up, when I was promoting the book, ended up going, stumbling on the place in uh, um, New York, the outpost. And it was pretty cool. Got a tuna mount, and I'm like, this is, I mean, a tuna mount's pretty simple and stuff like that, but it was really good. So. Are there places that you personally, the, the, around here, that they know you and like, Psst, we've got this, we've got some good stuff. Come uh, in, check it out. Uh, not especially. I mean, I kind of stay under the radar when I go. I just kind of look through whatever they have and, and see. Heinen's, Whole Foods would be my two, two go-to places. And now, maybe uh, there'll be another place that you're, you're working on. Correct. I don't want to spill any beans, so I'll let you no, you're say as much as you like. Um, it kind of... Once I did the book, I kind of did it for about promoting, went to New York, did uh, Washington, D.C., placed a couple times in West Virginia, a couple times on TV, and people are like, when I took time off from work and stuff, they're like, well, what do you, what do you hope to do once you're done? I said, well, it'll figure itself out, something will come up, something. So it was kind of dwindling down, and I, um, for the blog, towards the beginning when I didn't know anything, I wrote uh, Gene McKenzie and McKenzie Creamery and went and visited lovely lady. So once I'm kind of winding down with book promotion, I wrote her, I'm like, I'm kind of stuck on what to do next. And she's like, we just happened to be starting the Ohio Cheese Guild. We have a meeting in like a month, I think it was. She's like, I think you should join. I think you should come to the meeting. I'm like, I've, okay. So I joined, I went to the meetings. Um, I talked to people, started like networking with everybody and stuff like that. I'm like, okay. So then I think it's, April is uh, National Grow Cheese Month. So I had connect uh, those connections with Cabot Creamer, who makes good cheese, and Kerrygold, and every so often they'd send me free cheese and still kind of do. Um, so I'm like, I'm gonna feature these national cheeses on the blog, um, kind of give some history of the brand and stuff like that. But I'm like, okay, so nice to do that. But I also wanna do some local cheeses, give them some shout outs, because they're good people. Um, and that's when, between my mother and I, I spend days trying to find me. McKenzie's kind of everywhere now. So I mean, get at Heinen's, Whole Foods, Giant Eagle. They've done a great job of getting their cheese out there. But some of these other people that I met at the, the um, guild and have met at farmer's markets and stuff like that, their distribution, their capacity aren't big enough for a place like Heinen's. Like Heinen's would love to carry them, but they're just not making enough cheese. So we ended up at Luna on Fairmount, and they have this whole big bakery, delicious desserts and stuff. And at the bottom, they have one shelf of, of uh, cheese, Ohio cheeses. I think it was Lake Erie Creamery and Mayfield, Mayfield Creamery. And it was days that I was trying to find these cheeses and I'm like, there's either not a need for the local cheeses to find it or there's a need that hasn't been fulfilled. So that's kind of how I got the ball rolling with um, opening a cheese shop. Originally, I started with, okay, I'll feature Ohio cheeses, carry national, international cheeses, which are not necessarily my expertise. But then I started putting feelers out on the internet, social media. I'm like, well, what else? I know I can't just carry cheese because I close up in a day. Besides wine and beer, what else can I carry um, that would supplant or complement cheese? And I got hundreds, hundreds of ideas, like besides breads, crackers, hot sauces, jam, jellies, coffee, um, I think there was more of that chocolate, chocolate. Um, which obviously pregnant goes ladies. Into pregnant ladies. Yeah. So the idea kind of transformed into a local shop overall. So I'll, as long as I, I'm on the path still investigating, hoping to open, um, but as long as everything comes together, it'll be a local shop. So not only will it have the local Ohio cheeses, which will be my um, forte, so to speak, we'll have other local brands. Um, there's so many local people making good stuff that you can't all, you have to go to this store, you have to go to that store, you can't necessarily all find it in one spot. 
So that's kind of my, uh, try to bring it all together, give these people their exposure. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make anything, but I wanna give. Yellow House, there's Coco Borrego, uh, Mayfield Road, Lake Erie Creamery, and Blue Jacket Dairy, and Mackenzie are the six that I, I'm gonna start with as long as, as, long as I open. Um, and they've been in touch, I've built the connections. I have no, like Heinen's is good people and I talked to the cheese lady at Heinen's, but if you, it's hard to get direct, like you don't, you go and you kind of pick it out and you go. With, with my shop, I hope to have it where you come in and I can tell you the story behind the cheese because I know the cheese maker. Or I know the guy who's making the jams and jellies and stuff like that. And I have that local connection, which seems where we're going. Um, but I can add more to it and it won't be just a grocery store where you go in and pick stuff up and leave. You kind of build a connection. Well, are you going to be like the, uh, the comic book store guy or the used record store? Like, you're buying this with this? Yeah, exactly. Like, Get out. Or, yeah, it sounds like you know, that. How much is this? It's not for sale. I'm not selling it to you. You're going to be like that? Yeah. A little bit? A little bit. But no, but you'll be nice. I'll be nice, yeah. And, and I mean, there is a, and, and cheese can be expensive, especially local cheeses can go upwards of uh, like $29 a pound. Um, but I mean, if you're making a grilled cheese, go to Whole Foods or Heinen's. They have remnants, like if they cut little, they have little pieces left from something, pick something up, try it. If you don't like it, you only spend a couple bucks. You, you can try it on your sandwich or, or just, I mean, you don't have to spend $30 and sometimes melting cheese after you just spend $30 on it, it seems counterintuitive. You may want to just taste that on a nice, piece, on a nice cracker or something mm -hmm. like that. But to make it, I mean, these took, these two sandwiches took five minutes, 10 minutes tops yeah. to put them together. Prep was maybe another five, 10 minutes. So. Although I love fancy cheeses, in a grilled cheese you don't necessarily need fancy no. cheeses. But now you're, you're uh, moving to the next level up. Correct. Up Correct. Next level up the ladder. Okay. Um, I think uh, uh, we maybe have some audience members with questions about yeah. cheese, not just grilled cheese, but cheese in general. So go, go ahead. Follow, uh, follow up on the store. Where, I might have missed, where are you going to open the store? I'm looking uh, in Gordon Square possibly, so the near west side. Um, but I kind of focusing, Cleveland's having their resurgence and stuff, and I kind of want to be where, quote, the action is. So if not necessarily in Gordon Square, somewhere Ohio City, Tremont, that area, um, and, and go from there. I mean, I'm looking there, I can possibly end up spreading out into the suburbs or something like that, but that's the idea at the moment. And that could obviously change. What were the six favorite cheeses? The brands that I, uh, from Ohio, are Blue Jacket Dairy, they're out of, like, towards Toledo, um, Yellow House, which is um, Seville, Ohio, Coco Borrego, which is now down towards Akron, um, Mackenzie, which I can't, I'm blanking on where she is, um, uh, Mayfield Road, I, and Lake Erie Creamery. Lake Erie Creamery, I have to tell you, um, once I started doing this, I wanted to kind of investigate more. I saw Mackenzie, and she has a great property and, and a lovely place. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll go visit Lake Erie. Lake Erie, at, at the time, I think he wanted, has wanted to move, but I don't think he has, is not an office building, basically downtown. It's, their place is not bigger than this room, yeah. and they're making phenomenal. It's him and another person, and they, they do some great stuff. They have cows there? Uh, he brings, I was going to say, he, there's two, and I'm going to blank on the, the two kinds. There's cheesemakers who have, which is uh, Yellow House does, and maybe Mayfield, I think, as well, has their own animals and milk their own animals. And then there's like Lake Erie, who partners with farmers and bring in the milk, and then they make the cheese. I can't remember the two different the actual names for them, but they're making, I mean, they all kind of make similar cheeses, but different, and, and they're all pretty delicious. And a lot of this info is on your blog, right? Correct. Grilledchain.com. Yeah. Yeah, grilled you have to check it out. And then I have a very, very small website for the shop as well, locavorkley.com, which is Locavore Cleveland. So. Very good. Other questions? Those are, yeah, those are, I haven't experienced those as much. We used to go like probably once a year down there. I think I got a good smoked Swiss or smoked cheddar down there that's really good. They've won, I see every so often, they win many, many awards. So I mean, I would definitely recommend on this cheese. They're good, they're traditional cheeses, but they're, I mean, they're good stuff. And a lot of them are available, right? In, yeah. say, Heinen's or, or that sort of thing, yeah, farmer's I think, markets. I think farmer's markets, and, and even getting the local cheeses, farmer's markets is a great place. I think Whole Foods has some 
um, as cheeses I see every once in a while. Um, they're just good traditional cheeses. I think there's somebody had, supposedly farmer uh, Amish has like the best Swiss in the world or best Swiss in the country or something like that I saw. So yeah, definitely Amish cheese uh -huh. for sure. Other questions? In the back. So uh, it sounds like what you're describing is this phenomenon <coughs> around like craft beers. Correct. And so is this uh, going on in other resurgent parts of Small middle America, US, getting more. Uh, the cheeses, cheese, yeah. There's there's a lot of like quote local cheeses that are making big names for themselves as well. Um, Wisconsin, Vermont. There's Cowboy Creamery out west who started pretty small. So I think even just not even just in Ohio, um, but I think there's a lot of great cheesemakers, kind of small traditional uh, back to the farm that are are really coming on and, and just making good cheese. Are there any regions where you absolutely do not want their cheese? I haven't stay away from Alaskan cheese. <laughs> I haven't found any Alaskan cheese yet. I haven't yet, cheese to But I haven't, I haven't found anything just yet. Yeah. Craft singles, are those good? Craft singles can be good for, as much as I like the $30 a pound, sometimes a craft single. Is that the one you give to the dog? Yeah, yeah. Okay. every once in a while, that's not bad for, for grilled cheese in a, in a pinch or not really cheese, I think it's cheese product, but it's, okay. it's still good. It's still good. It's still good. What things did you learn from your grandma that you were in your book? Um, I think the, she used the same butter, um, so yeah, you might as well give it out. It's uh, Land O'Lakes butter. It's sweet butter. Mom's made it. I haven't really tried any other butter, to be honest, because that's just kind of what I grew up on. So it melts well, it spreads well. So butter. Land of Lakes whipped butter, uh, salt, a little bit salted, um, but it, we, I think we went through two or three tubs to make the sandwiches tonight, so. Uh, I didn't, is that unsalted or? You could do either one. This one happens to be salted, but I mean, if you don't want to do the salted, you're, I mean. My mom always used the lightly salted. Oh, sorry. My mom always used the lightly salted, so we just go. Scooped she, in. She, she was a wise woman. She would cut it because he would never eat. She would cut it up and they were party sandwiches. Make them a little square. Because heaven forbid, he would have to chew. Yeah, I didn't like chewing back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Did you grow up? You grew up around here? I grew up in Solon, yeah. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm local as a kid. Do you have si si uh, siblings? I have a sister. She doesn't have, she doesn't have the pole to Cleveland that I do. I do, so she lives in Maryland. She lives in Maryland. She's happy in Maryland. That's good. Was she a grilled cheese fan though growing up, or were you the one who's like, Grandma, please? I think I was the, the grilled cheese fan. There you go. I think it was me. It worked out well. So um, when you decided to write this blog, yeah. you sat down at your computer and did you know what you were going to write? And how long did it take to get followers? And how um, did that all work? Yeah, that's because I I mean I always I'm a technology person. I went to school for digital design. Um, I've always loved photography, did most of the photos in the book. Um, so I, I always wanted kind of to do a blog, but I never had a very interesting enough life just to write about myself. No one really wanted to hear my thoughts. So once I hit on the grilled cheese, um, that seemed to be my end in writing a blog. Um, kind of knew some of the technology behind it to, to start it from there. And in terms of building a following, I'm still doing that to, to today. Uh, still learning both with Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Um, you just kind of uh, network online instead of networking in person. So if I put in a search engine grilled cheese, would I end up at your blog? Uh, you may. There's There was someone else who kind of came up after me who kind of got a bigger following, which is okay. Um, but I think you'd stumble on me eventually. Grilledchain.com though. Yeah, That'll take you right there. That'll take you right there. Yeah. You might consider uh, visiting a cheese factory. I know of one, the Tullamo Cheese Factory oh, yeah, yeah. in Oregon. It's absolutely fascinating from the environmental aspects of the cows yeah. and the rivers nearby to the uh, automated machines that investigate the health of the cow as they're giving milk. Yeah. It's just incredible. That, and then to watch the assembly line of all the cheese blocks coming off and being sliced just to fit these little packages. That, that's another good national brand. I kind of talked to them briefly, but they make some good cheese too. So, yeah. Tillamook? There's Tillamook, Kerrygold, and Cabot are the three that I kind of know. And 
Now you said you prefer shredded cheese. Correct. I think that's nice. What do you do? I mean, a lot of cheeses aren't available shredded, and if it's a softer cheese, do you have tricks to? The softer cheeses, unfortunately, uh, do you have one in mind, like a brie or something like that? Or are you talking, or just soft? Just something that doesn't shred really easy. <laughs> um, I mean, as long as you kind of can crumple it, it doesn't have, you know, I mean, this was, a, uh, these cheeses I use as grater and stuff like that. Um, I would say just in terms of that, just kind of more. Provolone or farmers, do those grate? The provolone did, yeah, keep it cold and kind of, the longer you leave it out on your table, it's the softer it's going to get. So I mean, leave it in your fridge, and then shred directly from the fridge. So you have some um, that like that. But I say, um, if you, typically shredded cheeses that are already pre-shredded are going to cost you a little more. If you have no problem doing it at home, I'd say just buy the, <coughs> buy the block yourself and shred it. And that way, you know how much you need. You can see how much you need and save the block because once it's shredded, it's going to not going to last as long as the. You can get much more variety if you shred it Correct. You can get a much more variety, yeah. I'm going to throw your whole thing on cheese sandwiches. I use the olive oil instead of butter. You could do that too. Yeah. yeah. Instead of butter, she said. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You got to get that crunch to them and give it a nice, nice golden brown. But olive oil, would, it would be good. I think I'd done it a couple of times. The first time I did it, I was like, this turned out a lot better than I expected. Oh, Actually, I have two questions. Yeah. You didn't cover your grilled cheese when you your sandwich when you were making it. I always did that. You can do that, and, and my mom will say that you she could would do it to um, that way the heat kind of stays in. It'll cook a little bit faster. It'll give you. Um, I I don't, but I don't see a problem necessarily with covering it. You can. It wouldn't be as crisp, right? It may keep the heat in. Uh, it could get you to Christmas, I think. Does it? Yeah, no, I, I never had a problem. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I usually, but I still flipped it. Right, right, right. It, it was never like soggy and got soggy. Yeah. But my other question, too, is you're putting all this butter on this bread, and you're eating all this cheese. <laughs> I don't know how you can stand it. I was going to say, it's so good. <laughs> um, I've, I, I've, I've gone through my, uh, I, I used, when I was, I joked that when I was a younger kid, I did go to old J.C. Penney's and get the husky pants. So I kind of grew into, grew into my body, I guess. Um, it just I have good metabolism, I guess, and to chalk it up to. Um, and and uh, I had a desk job, and, and I didn't like that. And I think I was a little too stagnant then, and had a little bit of the weight. But uh, I guess I've just been lucky with it. I mean, you exercise, you work out. Yeah, I work out as much as I can, not as much as I should. No, I exercised once. I remember. <laughs> Are there other questions? I exercised last week. <laughs> no. Well. Don't forget to go to grilledshane.com. The right. book is here. He's here for uh, your questions. And uh, our next show will be October 5th with uh, the Black Keys photographer, who has the photos from uh, the early days of the Black Keys. Uh, but Shane, thank you so much for being here. Thank we really appreciate much. it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Very much. Delicious. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to the management and staff of the Hudson Library and Historical Society for their assistance in the production of this program and for providing the adult program series for the citizens of Hudson. For a DVD or Blu-ray copy of this or any HCTV program, contact Hudson Cable Television at 330-653-2500 or via email at hctv.com at hudson.oh.us.